Okay, let's just move this. Don't you just hate it when you press record and you're like, oh wait, it doesn't look good there. Story of my life. Okay, I'm kind of seeing in the shadows a bit. Let's just get some help. <laughs> G'day guys, it's Jaro here, and today I wanted to talk about something that I think is really damn important, and the sun is blinding my eyes right now, so let's fix that. <laughs> there we go, I'm not being blinded now. Woohoo! Okay. So something I wanted to discuss today was... A matter that I've always had to struggle with and something I've had to do with my entire life and I thought I'd get some insight, some information out to the world and kind of just talk about it. So obviously in 2018 we've kind of broken down the whole gender, we're breaking down I should say, the gender stereotyping of women should have, you know, this beautiful hourglass figure and all of these things and men should be masculine and brawn and not show emotions and da 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 da, very robotic. It's kind of more of like we're appreciating men who look more feminine or show more emotions or maybe isn't the stereotypical like, you know, broad shoulders and 6 and 12 8 packs and all of these different things. We're accepting everyone for who they are. And we're accepting females being more masculine and, you know, wearing oversized tees that are their own or not having big boobs and a big ass and not having to be flat, you know, flat stomach. We're accepting all mixtures. We're getting to the stage where we're accepting transgender people. It's going to take a while for most people to accept it, but I think a lot of us are at that stage. You know, we're accepting gays, lesbians, bi's, and queers, and all the others that I'm missing, like asexual, bis um, asexual, pansexual, um, monosexual I know is one that I've just learnt recently, like, all of these other, like, other types that fit under, well, are a part of the LGBTQT plus community, we're starting to accept more and we see more of, so, that's amazing. But something I did want to talk about was, especially me in my life, I have a family, not only just, like, my parents, but, like, extended family as well, is very stereotypical and very... I'm not going to say racist, but they're just very stereotypical in the sense of, especially my nana. I love her to death. I love her with all my heart, but she can be very stereotypical. And that's because she hasn't realized that 2018 were past stereotypes as much as it was back 80 years ago. Or you know what I mean? Things like that. So she's very much a woman should cook and clean, be in the kitchen look really good for their man. I hate that. I can cook, I can clean, but if I want to sit my butt down, play a video game and be really lazy and not look like a snack or not look really damn good for my partner, not just a male, just a partner in general, I can do that because it's 2018. Another thing that really upset me was when I was talking with my mum and we we're talking about different things and I said I don't want to wear a lot of makeup to a wedding I'm going to. You know, I'm just not a makeup person. I've been told by many people I don't look good with said makeup on. So I was kind of like, you know what? I don't want to have makeup on. I'd rather show my natural beauty than having all of this makeup on, you know? And her response was... But you're a female, it's what you're supposed to do. Just because I'm female doesn't mean I have to put on makeup. My response to her was literally, but guys wear makeup. Males look better than me with makeup on. Does that mean that I can't play video games because I'm a female? It just kind of hit me that no matter what, some people still have that stereotypical structure built in their head that, you know, my mum will always say to me, you're a female, why don't you like makeup? You're a female, why don't you like shopping? You're a female, why don't you like anything females do? And I felt like saying sometimes, if I was a male, would you accept me more? 
if I was the son you never had, like you used to tell me, you know, you you wanted a son as well, would that have made you better? It's hard enough, and I can only say this, I'll explain in a second, it's hard enough being a female, but then having all these pressures on you makes it worse. And I'm only saying this right now, that I can only talk from the experience of being a female, I've not had the experience of being a male or other genders, or even zero gender, because gender's a construct. I'm speaking as being born in a female body, being a female, growing up as a female, who I am today is a female. That's what I'm going to be talking about. I can't talk about men stereotyping and all this stuff. I would love to have a discussion with someone about that. But for now, all I can talk about is female issues and stuff like that. Because that's what I am. I'm a female. You know? Last I checked. Yeah, still female. <laughs> it, you know, it's hard walking out into public and being a female because you have all of these different standards you have all of these expectations you're supposed to meet you know if you're a female you have to and again this could go for both ways i'm just saying the experience that i've had is you know if you're a girl who normally covers up you know wears long stuff or doesn't usually show a lot of their stomach and then decides to for one time the expectation is that that shouldn't be done I'm a girl who particularly likes to wear long jumpers, I like to be comfortable, wet trap pants, you know, I like to be very covered. But on the times I'm feeling a little frisky, or I'm feeling, I actually feel sexy for the first time in a while, if I want to wear a dress, don't give a bad reaction, just be like, yeah, you look good. Rule I've always been taught, see something nice or nothing at all. Or if I look like shit, then you can tell me. Because I obviously have trust in you that you can tell me these things. But if I walk out in public in like a tube top, which I bought recently, and some shorts, clearly I must have some confidence in myself. Don't ruin that confidence by being like, oh, we didn't know we were calling the sluts over here, or we were calling, you know, or whistling at me, you know, like the dog whistles, or. All of those things. Because it doesn't feel nice. It doesn't feel nice when you have a friend or someone else literally pulling your shirt like this. Being like, your shirt should be longer or your pants should be longer. Like, it's just like, maybe I felt comfortable before you did all of that. You know? Stereotyping needs to stop. And it has been stopping. Don't get me wrong. You know, it is definitely stopping, but it's still, I think, always going to be an underlining issue when it comes to both genders. Uh, do you know what I mean? You can't... And I'm going to be really honest right now. I'm being 100% honest, as I always has been and always will be. As a child, I thought any male who wore pink was gay. Now, I'm older, I've come to the realisation that no, pink is just a colour. Pink is not meant for females. Blue is not just meant for males. Like, I've always had a blue room. It's always been either blue or purple. I've always loved the colour blue. Does that make me a male? And when I was older, I kind of realised that, like, no, they're just colours. If guys wear a pink shirt, then good on them. They can rock pink. You know, it shouldn't be stereotypical. Or, like, when I was younger... I wanted two different haircuts. One was a black bob with an electric blue streak through it. <laughs> or another haircut I always wanted was, you know, like all of this shaved and having a little bit up the top. Like the stereotypical male look. So if you think of like Jacksepticeye, Markiplier, Ethan from Crank Gameplays, PewDiePie's hair, like all of their hairstyles. Ooh, hiccups, pardon me. You know, that type of like, shaved here, puffy up the top bit. I've always loved that. And I always thought, why couldn't I get that? And I talked to some people I know, I'm not going to say names, and they're like, oh, you can't get that haircut because it'd make you look like a lesbian. That made me so mad. I'm like, it's a haircut. Who cares what I do with this dead weight that's hanging around my head? Who cares how it's styled? 
If I am lesbian, good on me. If I'm not lesbian, why should it matter how my hair looks? You know? Experiencing all these things and listening and hearing all these things is just the most frustrating thing. Because you're just like, well, why should it matter? I'm a 17-year-old girl who likes to wear oversized clothes and likes to be comfortable in the clothing she's in. And that's okay. I have other friends who wear singlets and really tight jeans. And they look goddamn hot like that. And that's fine. And I have friends who are, you know, wear the same clothes every single day. And they look fine. Like, it shouldn't matter how you look or how you dress. You're comfortable, be comfortable. And I know that, like, in the past I've said some things. And I do want to apologise on that front. I put up a video when I was, it was about three years ago I think it was. And I called it D-Girls. I think I've actually privated it. I'm not sure. But I said, dear girls who wear jeans that have so many holes in them, you might as well not have pants on at all. Why are you doing that? At the time, I just saw it as... Like, because... I'm not defending myself, but there was a girl who literally had a hole that went from here. Went all the way up to her hip. And it was just like, no jean in between here. And I, as a child, was like... That's not proper. Because I was always taught females need to dress proper and elegant and need to look their best, always. They need to, you know, to be sophisticated and nice, they have to wear jeans with a really nice top or they have to wear dresses and they have to look good, always. And I hated that. I always loved my track pants. Like, I love them to death. I love wearing oversized jumpers that don't fit me. You know, I love wearing shirts that are just maybe larger than I am. It makes me feel safe and comfortable. And I do apologise if I did hurt anyone in that video. But I was young and naive and I'm learning. I'm always learning. This video has kind of gone all over the place, but what I just wanted to stress out the most was that don't worry what people say when it comes to gender identifications and all of that stuff. If you're a trans and you've recently just become a trans or you're recently just watched, done like top surgery or anything along those lines, what you should do is do what makes you happy. And this goes to anyone. Do what makes you happy. Wear what makes you happy. Wear what makes you feel good and comfortable. Or, you know, have some items that are a little bit frisque. But... Just do what you're comfortable with. Gender stereotyping is going to be around, I think, for a while. Whether we choose to fight that battle or not is up to us, the millennials. It's up to us, the people and the humans and others that are on this planet. We choose what to fight and what battles to fight. And I'm choosing to fight the battle for gender equality, for female rights, and just for human rights, as it is. I'm a female activist through and through. I think that females are amazing. And that, you know, there's one love. And it's just loving everyone. Because I've experienced and seen firsthand what it's like to be a female. And to be treated completely differently. Than it would be to a male counterpart. Because I'm a female... I get treated differently and that's not fair. So, with that, if you guys have any comments, please put them down in the comment section below. I would love to read about them, hear your stories, hear your opinions. Just, I want to hear what you guys have to say. But that's all for now. And anyway, Jarrah, she has in the next video. Whoop, sarcasm out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.